So, <clears throat> it's a Saturday. Did my morning rituals. Had two bowls of cereal. I usually have spam uh, during the day, but slept in an hour. Yeah. So now we're gonna do some fun stuff. Hopefully there's fun stuff, but before that, it took me like 30 minutes to try and find my keys and um, found out I left it in the car overnight. I was talking to my friend last night and I, I was in the car for a bit and I must have just went back in and, and left it in there. Stupid me. As you can see, I am completely empty. Well, I'm on the red, so let's, let's get this going. Oh, you just gotta love Costco. Good old Costco. I just got here at uh, Sabres, and there's this weird, creepy guy just standing next to a car looking at me. So if my car gets broken into again, what's up? Um, this guy's to blame. Here, I'll show you. That's him, ladies and gentlemen. That is him. Check out this beauty. That leather is insane. But look. United States Air Force. Is this real? It feels real. No tags. Oh, that's stitched in. That's dope. What is that? Yo. Okay, so today is the first Saturday of the year 2019, which means the society will go through a wave of new products, right? New cars, new clothes, and so forth. And it got me thinking, there's gonna be a lot of new camera gear coming out this year too, I, I have a feeling. Um, last year, like you know, on, at least on the Sony line, there's an A7 III that came out. ZU and Crane came out with the Weeble Lab. And so I, I kind of I got me thinking because about three years ago, I bought the A6500. I really, really like that camera. I feel like the autofocus is just a lot better than the 80D or, or the 70D. Um, it has in-body stabilization. It's, it's small, it's compact, and you know, and especially for travelers, um, Lindsay and I, when we travel the past couple of years, like I've, that camera just fits in my pocket, um, unless if you have a big lens, like an 18 to 105. Other than that, I mean, it's it, like, it, it's not heavy. You can get some really good footage out of it, um, shooting in 4K and then compressing it down to 1080 if you, if you, if you want to. I, I do that most of the time. That's what I want to get into. Um, this is why I feel like the A6500 is still relevant in 2019. And I hope this video will help you decide if, you know, on a camera that you want. Because, I mean, right now, if, if anyone's asking me what, what do I recommend, what camera, I would say the A7 III because it's just, it's flat out amazing. But if you don't have two grand to fork up, and you don't want to spend a lot of money on lenses, especially full frame lenses, I would I would go the A6500 route. Uh, it's a really good B cam too, and I've, I've shot it for with interviews, I've, I've done commercials with it too, and it's just amazing. Okay, so Lindsay told me not to get anything, but 
I did anyway. Um, but I'm gonna give it to her because it can't fit my head. I have a lot of hair, but she's gonna like it. Hopefully she won't get mad. Hey, Lindsay. Hi. How you doing? Okay. <laughs> um, he's got done working out. Yeah. You know how you said we shouldn't get anything? I bought something, but it's for you. Whatever. No, I promise. I probably ate half of it and said it's for you. <laughs> no, it's it's actually a really cool find. What is it? Ready? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Ooh. That's awesome. I know. <gasps> it's legit, too. That is legit. And look at this. The swoosh mark on the tab. Oh, my gosh. This is in such good condition. Okay, now before I go any further, I just want to share with you my history uh, with, with filmmaking, or rather just the, the equipment I've been using. So about seven to eight years ago, I started out with my dad's camera. It was a Nikon D90, and it actually had a video feature on it. I wasn't too much interested on the photography side, um, but I just wanted to make films. And um, yeah, I started on that. Uh, my dad hasn't used it for, for years because he broke the lens. So I ended up buying a, you know just a 50 millimeter and started shooting some videos. I think that Nikon D90 was one of the first uh, DSLRs to actually shoot video. Um, and that's why I was kind of spoiled in a way because I didn't have to buy like a, a really expensive camera at that time. Um, but I ended up uh, selling and upgrading it. Um, so my parents helped me buy a, a Canon 7D and I just had a kit lens on it. Um, but what I did was with that money, I sold it to one of my good friends, Mike. If you're watching this, I, hopefully you still have it. And then ever since then, I've been using the 5D, I've been using Blackmagic, um, I've used the FS700, so I've, Sony, sorry, and then I've, I've just been back and forth on that. And I made the switch to, from Canon to uh, A6500 when I, uh, my, my camera got stolen. So, it was very unfortunate. Uh, I was working at a studio at that time and not only was my stuff got stolen, but their stuff got stolen too. After that, my uh, sister-in-law, she was able to let me borrow her, uh, Canon T2i, I think. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that held me up. I was able to still shoot some commercials and whatnot, and I was able to switch over to the um, 60D and then sold that, and I went ahead and got the A6500. Here it is, and I still have it. And this is the 18 to 105 lens on there. Yeah, so I've, I've been through a lot of different ranges of DSLRs, and now I'm kind of going on the, the mirrorless route, and I still use it. I, I love it so much. I shoot a lot of dance videos with it. I've used it with interviews as well, and it's it's just such a phenomenal camera. Yes, there are some bad stuff about it too, like these batteries. They don't even, they only last 35 to 40 minutes on shooting on 4K. Um, but what I realized is if you buy these brand, the RAV Power, they have more juice in it, um, but, I mean, you're not going to get a full hour off of it. Maybe you will, maybe not. Why I like this so much too is, especially with this com this combination with this lens, the 18 105 this lens doesn't uh, erect, like it doesn't pop out. Um, so when you're going to 18 105 it's just all internal. Which means is that whenever I'm on a gimbal, I use this gimbal, it doesn't throw the weight off. So especially if you have like a zoom lens or something, the motor is going to have a hard time balancing your camera while shooting. But with this, it just works perfectly and it's super light, you know? Uh, so that means I can put a filter on this if I want. You know, I want to be completely honest with you guys too is uh, one thing I kind of don't like and I'm having a hard time with it, but I got used to it, was the screen. So when you shoot 4K, it, it dims down to save battery and you you can't see nothing. Like you, you, you barely can see anything and you just have to learn how to shoot blind. Um, when you're on 18 or a uh, wider range, it's not that bad. I mean, on a day like this, if you're indoors and you're shooting 4K, you're good to go. Um, to me, it's not that big of a deal to some it is. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys uh, 
some of the sample shots. Yeah, tell me if you like it. Okay, before we watch the video, I just wanna say that this isn't an in-depth video on the A6500, but rather just kind of things I like about it. And I just wanna talk broadly about the camera. But if you guys are more interested on like more in-depth, let me know in the comments below and I can make a video about it too. If you guys find this video helpful in any way, if you enjoyed it, please uh, like and subscribe. It'll go a long way for me. Um, I'm trying to push a video out once a week. Hope you guys enjoyed the little clip. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys next week. Deuces.